want to find out what's going on in your community? El Observador is San Jose's bilingual weekly newspaper. Go to your local newsstand and pick up your free copy today. Looking for the skills and training you need to get a new career? Call CTC, the Center for Training and Careers, and start working towards that new career today. Call CTC in San Jose. Good evening, I'm Siwapili Rose Amador, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to our show. You just saw the photo of a recently fallen warrior, and it's uh, an old friend from way back. Um, his name, Anselmo Sal Chemo Candelaria, and he was a true warrior, just involved in so many things over the years from starting the Black Berets to the uh, Confederación de la Raza Unida. Uh, he was a bear dancer. He was an elder son dancer. He was involved in starting the, uh, the powwow up at Mount Madonna, honoring the elders, and just a host of many other things. But today, we're honored to have with us his son. And I'd like to welcome Luta. And if Luta, you could say your full name for me. Uh, good evening. Uh, my full name is Wichak Piluta and it's in the Oglala Lakota language and it means red star. Oh, very nice, very nice name. And so nice to have you here with us today. Thank you. Um, just, you know, looking at the photo of your dad and I have some other ones too, but I kind of, I really like that one, you know, cause he's, uh, in fact, I saw a picture on your Facebook and I didn't recognize him because he didn't have the hat on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think without the hat, it was like, oh, wait, wait a minute, that's him. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. my father's really well known for, for being the founder of the Black Berets Pela Justicia uh, here in San Jose uh, in the early 60s. And, uh, you know, he was involved in a lot of, a lot of other things uh, involving the community, but he, the Black Berets was really his heart and soul. And, and he, he created the Black Berets out of a need for, for help within the community, and he believed that that help had to come from the community itself. So he, he organized a lot of different uh, events, especially out what, what was known at the time as uh, La Raza Nida or uh, the La Raza Park de Paz, which is known as Halyer Park now. Oh, yeah. uh, but they provided concerts uh, and, and security for those concerts. And uh, they also did neighborhood watches, cop watches. At, at that time, there was experienced a lot of police brutality mm -hmm. and racism uh, with, with the law enforcement. And also food programs, you know, uh, trying to get food to those uh, underserved communities. So he was really, really dedicated to that. And so, yeah, my father's very well known for his Black Beret. Right. And uh, you grew up in that movement, and you're carrying that on. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that my dad really believed in was supporting the indigenous community, uh, you know, and, and all the indigenous people of the Western Hemisphere. So we, we were involved uh, in a lot of things growing up and many different organizations. He worked very closely with uh, the American Indian Movement, mm -hmm. AIM, uh, with Dennis Banks and uh, Bill Wapapa out of San Francisco at that time. Uh, he was also uh, working with other groups such as the Brown Berets in L.A., uh, and here locally in Watsonville. And uh, we also participated in a lot of local California ceremonies. He, he felt very, very uh, strongly about ensuring that his children knew our culture. You know, and being from Ohlone, Rumson Ohlone descent, he mm -hmm. wanted us to know and understand our culture. And so, yeah, we definitely traveled a lot to, to these different events to and show that's, support. And that's so important. And he was one of the founders of the Mount Madonna powwow, and that's been going on for many years now. Yes, uh, with, with the gathering at Mount Madonna, which is known as the Honoring of the Elders mm -hmm. Gathering, uh, for, for my father it was important again 
that that we you know embraced our culture and and part of that is honoring our elders mm -hmm. and so he felt a, a need in our community to to have a gathering that incorporated the fire a sacred fire that people could come and pray to and, and also the the act of honoring our elders and and so he you know, he had this vision of a gathering and bringing the elders and the community together, and, and he did that. And so many uh, volunteers and supporters have continued that today, and it's still going at Mount Madonna. It is, it is, and it's, it's a really nice gathering. It's a weekend, I believe, right? Yes. A weekend of, uh, you could stay there and camp, and you have the bear dance, and it's just a very um, spiritual experience to be there, and just, you know, and I think the last, the last time I saw him was there. When I must have been, I don't know, seven years ago or so when yes. he came out to visit. Yeah. And that's when I took that picture because we were sitting around talking about old stories, of course. You, you start <laughs> doing that right away. Definitely. But uh, I'm so glad to, to hear that you and some of the other children of our, uh, our, the former, you know, the movement people are involved too. And as we were talking about following in the footsteps yeah. and carrying on the traditions that are so important. Yeah. Uh, well, today, I mean, it, it's kind of hard not to want to be involved and participate. Growing up in the movement, growing up in the ceremonies, it's, it's pretty much all I know, you know, and, and especially like for my brothers and my sisters and a lot of the other children uh, of, of leaders in the movement, uh, it's, it's what we know. And so for myself today, I just find myself continuously being involved or being asked to be involved uh, with a lot of different organizations and events. And, and I, I feel great and honored to be able to be a part of that because I'm continuing my, my father's legacy. That's and right. I, also, I also believe in the struggles that, that we fight for uh, as a family and, you know, as an indigenous person. So I, what I try to do is I try to, uh, you know, bridge different organizations that probably wouldn't come together. And I try to bring them together through, mm -hmm. through the similarities and similar struggles rather than being apart through our differences. You know, so I try to work with organizations like Spirit, which is protection of sacred sites, you know, uh, American Indian Movement, which is bringing, you know, warriors to, to protect those uh, sacred sites. Also the Black Berets Pala Justicia, which is about sharing the culture with the youth in the streets or urban areas today. You know, and, and you bring those organizations together and it works. You know, because you're bringing elders, you're bringing youth, and you're bringing issues such as sacred sites and protecting, and you're able to get people educated on these things, you know, and we can work together. So that's what I try to do today it, it, with my volunteer and my activism. And I see your shirt says, um, Mecha de San Jose, huh? Um, tell me about Mecha, what's going on there? Well, actually, I'm working with Metro right now at San Jose State through the Black Berets por la Justicia. Uh -huh. And what we do is we provide security for their events. Uh -huh. uh, what we try to do with our security is we, we, we try to provide a, a, a sacred security for events that are incorporating the culture for our community. So with, with Metro, they've invited us out uh, uh, to do that security. And they also ask us to do La, uh, La Cultura Cura workshops, mm -hmm. which is the Culture Cures workshops, and uh, which is facilitated by one of my tios, Henry Dominguez, which is an elder Black Beret. Um, so we work really closely with them and, and the youth there at the university level and sharing the culture. Uh, we also work towards getting them out to the uh, property that we, we use in Aptos, which has a sweat lodge and a teepee, and, you know, it's in the Redwood Forest and mm -hmm. some cabins out there. So we try to get the urban youth to connect oh, with, with Mother Earth, you know, and, and uh, so that's, that's how we work with Mecha, you know, getting them and, and the youth that they work with out to those areas and sharing the culture with them. Yeah, I think educating the youth toward their culture is so critical that they don't lose that connection. It's, it's really important. So now, as far as the Black Berets, now, for a while you didn't hear too much about them, and it seems like there's a resurgence, and I'm glad you're doing that. And you said there's a large group now in San Jose? Yes. Uh, well, the Black Berets, uh, because in the very beginning they were a very political, militant group, uh, which was necessary at mm -hmm. the time. And uh, they made a lot of great strides in making changes in our community. But <clears throat> we're, we're trying to reorganize it in a way, 
that uh, we're, we're addressing the issues in our own community. And right now we're dealing with, the, with a lot of gang violence, yes. uh, a lot of disconnection to our culture. You know, and so you bring those two things together, you, you, you have an understanding that, that with our culture there's a healing. And, and, and with that healing, we can help to put at least curb or a stop to the gang violence and the violence within our own homes and within our community. So today, we're, we kind of restructure it towards a nonviolent stance and, and just getting, getting the youth and the community educated on our culture and, and how through our culture, we can find healing, you know, for all those negative cycles within our life. Are you able to break through the... Um the differences between, say, the different gangs and so forth to bring them together? Well, we do a lot of unity events, which bring, in particular in this community, which is North and South gang members. Mm -hmm. And so we do a lot of unity events. We recently just did a, a spiritual peace march through San Jose from yes. uh, the east to west. And we're planning another uh, peace march from uh, south to north. Uh, just to go through the communities and, and, and spread the word that, you know, we need to pray, we need to pray for peace, and we need to come together and organize for peace. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so we, we just, we try to address the different communities, you know, uh, here, here within San Jose, and, you know, it's, it's north and south. So we work with all, all the, you know, all the youth in the community, no matter what. Oh, that's what, good. You that's know. good. You teach them a different way. Yes. And so what are some of the other projects you're working on? You're also involved with Saving the Sacred Sites? And yes, I work uh, with SPIRIT, which is Sacred Sites Protection and Rights of Indigenous Tribes mm -hmm. out of Vallejo with, with my elder there who's Miwok. His name is Wounded Knee Diacampo. He's been on the show. Yes, and uh, I really got involved during, uh, last year uh, during the, the Glen Cove occupation. Right. The, the sacred site's name is Sagoria Tay which is in uh, Ohlone, and uh, it was an Ohlone village site. And so I went out there to help and, and lend, lend a hand, and I got involved realizing that it's important that we protect the little sacred sites that we have left. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, from what I was taught was that there was uh, well over 450 shell mounds that lined the Bay Area, and today uh, they've all been covered. So there's probably only a few left that haven't been developed. So, you know, it's, it's not like we have this vast amount of, of land anymore, you know, especially with the sprawling urban cities here in the Bay Area. So our sacred sites of the Ohlone people are being destroyed every day. So it's important that we protect these places because eventually our children, our future generation, will no longer have these places to go to reconnect. And it's important that we have these, these places to reconnect because these are the sites that our ancestors walked on. That's right. You know, and, and, and through our culture, we realize that we can get the teaching still from our ancestors and connecting through the land that they walked on. So I feel that it's important that, that we, we, we fight to protect this. So I, I uh, very much am involved with spirit and, and wounded and, and taking direction. And, and so we've traveled, you know, from Glen Cove to Santa Cruz, uh, dealing with the Save the Knoll campaign. Right. But even as far as, as San Diego and, and dealing with Tom Cove, which is a sacred place, the creation place of, of the Luceno people, and they were developing there. So we try, we try to go and, and help wherever possible, you know, and whether it be just being bodies or out there, you know, handing out flyers and educating people or even sharing our songs and prayers to the ancestors, you know, and, and so we try to do as much as we can. Oh, that's good. I think I did see you out in Glen Cove because we took water and a lot of food out there. Yes. Uh, and, and I thought, that's where I saw you. Yes. Yeah. And it is so important because, as you say, we don't have a lot of land that's uh, left sacred. Land. And going out there and seeing that area out there, I thought, there's a million other places they could have put <laughs> the parking <laughs> lot that they want to put in there. This is ridiculous. Yes. You know, or their bathrooms or whatever they were going to put in there. And, you know, it's just... They want to just take whatever's left, yes. and it, it, they don't. They'll never value it, but we do, and we have to protect it. You're absolutely yes. right, and it's so critical that people like you, and wounded, and so forth, that go out there and do this because, let's face, a lot of people don't ha can't do be there. But if you can be there and support it in another way by water or singing or yes. prayers or whatever. 
that helps. Yes. You know, do what you can, but it's it's really really important. So you're doing valuable work, and I thank you for thank you. your work. Thank you. And so besides that, okay, so what else? Your full-time activism, what else are you yes, involved in? Yes, uh, I'm also involved with AIM West right now. Mm -hmm. And some of the issues that we're dealing with is always, of course, the freedom of Leonard Peltier. Uh, we're always requesting that people write to your senators and congressmen, mm -hmm. write to the president for the freedom of Leonard Peltier. Uh, you know, Peltier represents the indigenous people here in the Western Hemisphere, you know, and his freedom is our freedom. You know, so it's important that we continue to, to address that issue. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate that, that it's very well known that, you know, he was improperly, you know, imprisoned and, and that this government would do that in order to keep him in prison. So, you know, we need to make this aware to, you know, the, a, a lot of the international community knows this and understands it, but I, I believe we need to really work on, on the, the, the U.S. level and getting the citizens of the United States to realize that, you know, the, the government has covered up and, and lied to, to continue to imprison Leonard Peltier, and we That's need right. to, to recognize that. And we need to ask and demand his immediate freedom. Uh, you know, because this is not right that an innocent man has continued to stay in, in prison for, I believe, 35 years now. And, uh, you know, he has a family. He has grandchildren. He has, you know, relatives that, that want to be there with him, and he deserves that. So that's one thing that, that's one of the issues we deal with at, at AIM West. And we're also dealing with racist mascots. This last weekend, we were participating in, in a protest against the Cleveland Indians coming to the Oakland Athletics Coliseum. And uh, we were out there protesting with other organizations such as UNA and, and, a, and another uh, child of the movement, which is Quanta Parker Brightman, who is out there with AIM West and, and, and their group, UNA. Uh, you know, protesting and trying to get people to understand that, you know, these racist mascots uh, cannot be allowed in sports. Uh, they, they perpetuate racism and stereotypes and, and that we as indigenous people have a right to say what is offensive to us. Uh, unfortunately, out there, people were like, oh, you know, that's not offensive, you know, but they weren't indigenous people, you know, and so they don't understand that, you know, for us, that if we see it as offensive, then we have to be allowed to express that. Absolutely. I can't understand. Well, I guess I can't understand that they can't understand. You know, it's like, how can you do this to, you know, to people? You know, that we're human beings, you know, how can you just say, oh, I'm going to use you as my mascot? Yeah. You know, they wouldn't use themselves as a mascot. Yeah. Well, you and, know, or and if they do, fine, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but leave us alone. <laughs> yeah, know? well, the unfortunate, one of the things is like people say, well, it should be an honor. And, and it should be an honor. But unfortunately, uh, you know, it's not indigenous people who are, are creating these caricatures, right. you know. And so it's their idea of what our race is. Mm -hmm. and, and that is just not right. That's you know, right. it, that, that's what makes it wrong. And that we have a right to represent ourselves as we see ourselves. And you're so right that these other countries understand this. Yet United States, it's it's completely. I mean, even with Leonard Peltier, you know, the, these other countries support his release. They understand what's going. On. And being there, I was just there this past weekend in uh, Pine Ridge, and we were going down the road. And my friend says, "Oh, that was the Jumping Bull Ranch, and this is, you know." So it was like, oh, I was actually seeing the all the places that we had heard about, but. I had never really experienced being there and being at Wounded Knee and just, I just, you know, such a moving experience to be there. And then the way people just take it so lightly, oh yeah, he's in prison. <laughs> you know what I mean? Moving him around and all, and he's not in good health and all the things they've done to him over the years. It's just, it's, it's outrageous. And he should have been released so long ago. Yes. And hopefully um, this president will do so. Yes. You know, but. Well, we, we can only hope, uh, you know, being our first president of color, you know, we kind of felt that maybe he would be able to understand, you know, the plight of Native American people and coming from, from an oppressed uh, race that he would understand where we're coming from. Uh, so we continue to press, you know, Obama for the release and, and we'll see how it goes. But, you know, I want to encourage people to, to continue to just press their local you know, their, their local government and, and reach out, you know, to their senators and congressmen and, again, the president, 
you know, keep writing, keep, you know, keep, keep on, whatever it is. Uh, you know, some people can't get out uh, and, and be physical in the movement, but you can get on your computer, you can get, you know, emailing, letter writing campaigns, you know, any different, any different form is necessary and, and it does make a difference. It does make a difference. And you can help uh, by donating. And, and you know, Donna Wallach, who's our, our camera person here that volunteers with Native Voice TV, always has a booth out at the powwows. Yes. You know, I say, go stop by, give us, give some money for, you know, Leonard's uh, case or ha buy a t-shirt or sign a petition, do what you can do. Any little bit helps, Yes. you know, so we can't just forget. We have to keep reminding people. Yes. And so I do commend you on doing that as well. It seems like you're a little bit involved in everything. And so yeah, that's, you know. I, I, really, I really believe in participation. That's good. As I come back and, and, and uh, see what's going on in the movement community, I find that what's lacking the most, because there's heart there, there's a lot of good leadership, and there's a lot of uh, you know, good ideas, but it's participation. And I firmly believe that we need to participate. So when, when I That's participate right. in something, I don't ask to be a leader. I don't ask to be anything but a participant. And if it's picking up garbage or carrying a sign or singing a mm -hmm. song, uh, or offering prayers, that's what I do because it's important that we participate in our movement. And uh, you know, it furthers our people and it's important for the future generation. We have to show the future generation that, that, that uh, you know, through our culture, through our way of life, uh, that gives us the strength that we're not going to quit, you know, Absolutely. and that we have to continue on. So I definitely believe in participation in the movement, and that's what I do. That's wonderful. And I heard you were going to sing for us. Yes. Okay. Would you like to sing now? Yes. Uh, let me get my clapper stick okay, for you. Okay, can one of the, your daughters bring it over yes, to what us? Yes, what I'd like you to share with you girl is girl. Uh, a Loney song. And uh, I come from the Rumps and Ohlone people. I'm also Apache from New Mexico. Um, but in, in my travels and in, in the movement, I, I try to share my songs as a form of medicine uh, for the community and for the people. There we go. Gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> uh oh, I don't think I can stand up. Can we have the girls come over? I know we didn't plan this, but can All right. come on over. Let the girls come over. Uh oh. Come on, just stand over here by me. Right here. Don't be shy. Come here, stand right here. We'll listen to your dad sing. Stand by your daddy. Oh, she's oh, tired. She's tired. <laughs> oh, okay. You want to sing a song with dad? Yeah. Uh, stand with dad. And the song I'm going to sing is a fire song. <clears throat> so Tony so so My daughter, Humaya, which is hummingbird in the Rumson Ohlone language. And this is my daughter, Ampetu Luta Huastelo, which is Good Red Day in the Lakota oh, language. Beautiful, beautiful. 
Thank you for bringing them on. Thank you for no. being here. Thank, Thank you, you for all the work you do. What, do you have another project that you're planning on or just keep going uh, with we what keep you're doing? Going, we keep going, um, uh, doing different things. And uh, people can reach me. At, uh, at my email is oloni underscore nation at yahoo.com. Okay. And I'm just like, I get calls every day for different things to come and be involved in. And, uh, you know, the different organizations, Black Berets, uh, Por La Justicia in San Jose, mm -hmm. uh, Spirit, Sacred Sites Protection and Rights of Indigenous Tribe in Vallejo, and AIM West in San Francisco. So people, you know, can definitely contact me and we can get to different organizations and the issues right. that, you know, they feel that they could definitely be a part of. Good, and we need people all the time. So contact us at Native Voice TV. We'll put you in contact with Luta, too if you can help out on any of these issues because there's always a need and there's always something that people can do yes you know it doesn't it, it could it's a variety of things and you need a lot of help so whatever you can do to help we yes. need yes absolutely and thank you for being here watching us on native voice tv each week don't forget to like us on facebook we need lots of friends <laughs> And we'll like you back. So watch us on Native Voice TV every week. And we'll see you again next week. Why don't you wave to the camera? Bye. See ya.